cabin. All right, Black Bart. Now you get yours. Ha! All right, friends, here we go. We got a coat of the Easy Off on there, and we're going to it. It's dripping, and it's kind of working, and it's making it a little... It's making its advancements on that black paint. Now, Rob, why, why are you taking off that black paint? Don't you like old paint? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Now, if this was paint applied back in its day, then sure. But you can tell that it was, well, I can tell it was applied over rust. Uh, not too much rust, but rust. And the way the burner cone is saddled and damaged, you can tell it's uh, been painted over at some point in time just to stop it from rusting, which I don't fault the owner previous for doing. So yeah, they actually did this lantern a favor. Even though that rust is kind of, I mean, that paint is being tough because of the rust, yeah. Anyways, Russ likes to hold on to paint more so, but it's okay. We'll get her done. See you in a bit. Hey guys, how's it going? Pardon my appearance. I, I kind of like, <laughs> it's Monday. It's a, it's a city holiday. It's Cesar Chavez Day, and I have the day off. I'd usually be at work on Monday, but anyhow, we're uh, going to tackle this guy. As you saw, I was kind of doing my thing to it. We're trying another coat of, you know, oven cleaner and get that paint off easier and faster. I had a little bit left in a can. I thought I had more, but um, I was able to do one one pass with that last weekend, and uh, it kind of got the ball rolling. So I got I thought I would involve you guys and follow up with the progress on this one because this is a very rare lantern. It's not very easy to find these first generation Paul's leader cold blasts. Um, I only know of maybe three people that have them. Uh, or that I've actually seen post on the Facebook group. But anyhow, oven cleaner, uh, the Easy Off Yellow Cap stuff is definitely probably your best choice, depending on the paint. Uh, they have a, a version that has a blue cap, doesn't have lye in it, so it's a little gentler. Uh, some people will like it better than the yellow cap because they feel the yellow is a little too aggressive, but in my opinion, it takes the paint right off pretty quick. Um, so I would definitely try that. Now I've used Jazco in the past. For those who are unfamiliar with Jazco, it's a pretty old fashioned brand. You can find it at um, Home Depot, but the price has gotten crazy and they've changed the formula. So it's not nearly as, uh, uh, well, it's aggressive as it used to be. It was a very successful stripper that I used and it was, uh, I used it with good, with great success, great success, but it's not as strong anymore. Uh, because of California EPA, EPA laws and everything, it's hard to get something that's actually potent that will do what you need to when we're talking about older paint that's oil-based. Um, it's fine for water-based paints and latexes that are very common uh, these days. But with something that's older, uh, within the last 20, 40 years, you want something that's a little more heavy-duty. Uh, but the Yellow Cap Easy Off has lye in it, so it's very effective. Now, why did Jazco have to change their formula, but you can still get oven cleaner with some potent stuff in it? I, I don't know. Anyways, it's all a mystery. Nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> don't get me started. All right, so we are still working on the Pauls, and I'm going to hit it with another coat of Easy Off. And um, for those out there who have heard of many different methods of stripping lanterns of either paint or, or different finishes, uh, the, the E-Tank is a popular choice, or Light tank The electroly electrolysis method uh, can be very successful depending on your personal taste. Me, you know, I, I like to try and find out what kind of finishes underneath the paint first before I go further. So I find the Easy Off uh, Oven Cleaner quite beneficial because um, it gives you, it reveals what was under the paint and what it was like before it was painted then you can kind of decide where you want to go. Because if you do electrolysis, it's just going to take the paint off and whatever age and patina that you might want to preserve right off. So you'll have a very clean and squeaky, beautiful lantern, but it's not going to be very historic in appearance. It depends on what you want. So I'd say, as you can see by my 
a cabinet back here. I keep all of my good stuff in there. Um, well, you know, my tools and stuff. Uh, anyways, you get it. It's, it's aged. It's old aged white paint. And I left it. I, I did a WD-40 clean on it. It was, it was pretty bad, but it looks cool. It looks like it belongs in this garage full of old junk. <laughs> anyways, it's my personal taste, not yours, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to try and get this uh, paint off. And I'm going to reapply some more oven cleaner because it's starting to get dried out. Uh, it's sitting in the sun to warm it up because it's actually kind of a brisk day today. It's going to be probably hitting only 65, 66 degrees today, which is kind of kind of chilly for uh, for March. But anyhow, here we are. We'll do it again. I'll follow up. Okay, see you guys soon. Friends, here we are, a little sunlight, warming up the uh, metal of the lantern, and it'll probably hasten the process of the um, the action of the oven cleaner. It likes to be a little warmer than 70 degrees to actually be more effective. So um, it looks like it's bubbling and we're getting some results. So soon I should be just able to wipe some of the excess off. There's not a whole lot of paint left, but there is enough to be annoying. So get back at you guys with some more results. So stay okay, tuned. We're back and uh, we'll just take a little break from uh, from doing this lantern. Uh, I, I took, <laughs> I got a little smart today. First time I know. <laughs> I have a, a hook that sits in the yard. It's for plants or ferns or whatever. A yard hook. Uh, it's a little shepherd's crook type of wrought iron thing. But anyways, I hang lanterns on it. Uh, big surprise. I know, I know. It's okay. You weren't prepared for that. <laughs> anyways, I took it to the, the back part of the garage, uh, the behind the garage is here. And the dark little corner where there's just some dirt and grass isn't growing very well over there at all. So I hosed off the lantern hanging off the hook and that came that worked really well because I would just set it on the dirt and hose it off and it would tip over because of the pressure from the hose and everything. Well this way I can just hang it there and it'll just flop around and I can just spray it and it's it's a lot better. It works a lot better. So this once this really starts to take more hold I will do that uh, process again and continue just to do this until most or 90% of the paint is off. And then uh, I'll let it dry and then hose it down with some WD-40 and then come back to it a little later just to keep more flash rust from occurring once the paint's off. And that's kind of what happens, especially if it has nice metal under the, underneath there. If you're using any sort of uh, stripper or if you do an electrolysis or light bath and you get down to bare metal, you will get flash rust. And it's just something that happens with metal that's been exposed over the last, you know, for the first time in like 80 years. So. That's what it is. But anyhow, this thing is going to come out great. I have every faith, every bit of faith that it's going to be a pretty cool piece once I do my little thing to it. And some people ask me, like, well, how do you make it look like an antique still after you take the paint off? Well, like, well, that's what's great about the easy off oven cleaner stuff is it doesn't hurt or alter the age or finish or even surface rust underneath. It just removes the paint. That's what's really good about it that I like about it. Um, then I can decide where I want to go from there. If I want to do, if it's got heavy surface rust, then I, I do a WD-40 and steel wool scrub, uh, very fine steel wool, and I get a lot, as much off of the lantern as possible, and then leaving that dark brown, you know, aesthetic. And sometimes these things are pitted, and you can't really do too much about pits. Uh, I try not to do any more um, evapor rust dunks because that will remove all the rust. It's very effective that way. But when you have just gray pale metal with pits, it looks really weird. I don't think it's a, a very um, proper approach for, for these antique lanterns. Now, if you have perfect metal under there, then that's fine. But if you're dealing with rust, uh, any variety of style rust, there's different types of rust that we occur, uh, that we come across in our travels. And uh, some are very fine rust and won't pit, but other rust is more aggressive and it will pit the, your metal. But anyhow, when you get the paint off, then you can proceed how you want to do this, how, how far you want to go, uh, what kind of methods you want to use from there on. Uh, some people will use the boiled linseed oil stuff and that's, that's fine. It will coat the lantern and protect it from rusting or you know further uh, oxidation. But I don't like the wet look. It's really kind of not my thing. So when I do this, I, I wipe it down with WD-40 and then I scrub it a little bit and then proceed from there. So anyways, we'll get back at you guys in a little bit. Spot treating 
some of the areas that refuse to yield its black paint. So I'm just gonna let those sit there. And uh, yeah, it's a mess out here. It is absolutely messy. But anyways, something else. We do have progress. Got the burner out. Yeah, man, check that out. I know, come on, sit up, so, sit up for our audience here. Jeez, this thing. All right, this is what they call a Phoenix burner. So Lantern Joe says, and see this little lever? You're supposed to be able to rise it up and you, know, you can, you can, you know, massage or get frisky with your wick when it's still burning a little bit and it will put it out. That's the whole design behind it. And I think it's interesting, historically speaking, but it's a, it's, it's a POS. I mean, it, why would you need this? What? Somebody had to keep a job and they just kept refining details in, in patents of a brass burner. I mean, you gotta wonder, you know, I mean, this was part of life at one time. People were designing these things and being paid for it, who, you know, to light our world. You have to think about that sometimes, but they they were trying to create a, a better design and that's kind of cool. So historically speaking, this is interesting. This is cool, but dang, who put this in there? I really wonder because the original burner, obviously they felt wasn't good enough. And I have something correct coming uh, in the mail soon, hopefully this week or early next. But anyway, it's out. I got it out. So good deal. Win. That's a win. Small victory. So we're going to be ready to get this thing burning eventually. Now the glow plate, let's talk about glow plates. Now see the solder is broken. It's failed because the rust inside of that wire and sleeve that hold the glow plate to the wire uh, is not allowing it to pivot. So it broke this, the uh, solder. Uh, I might have to take the glow plate off and uh, clean it further and then try and get the rust out of that little sleeve and then reattach it. Anyways, that clip is, uh, yeah, so. More things to do, but yeah, we, we spot treated some of the black paint that does not want to come off and we're gonna just keep on working at it. Keep working at it and we're gonna get done. So that's the latest and greatest on the Paul's number two. So stay tuned. Hey everybody. Morning. Hmm. Coffee. It's what gets me going in the morning. It really does. I know that's for many Americans, but yeah, Europeans too. A lot of people world over, not just Americans. But anyways, <laughs> it's very important to this American. Yes, it is. Anyways, it's cloudy. It's been raining all night since uh, late last night. I'd say probably 11, 12, somewhere around there. Um, it's been raining, but it's finally taken a bit of a break and my neighbor's kids are outside playing. So if you hear some crying, screaming um, interruptions, then that's why well, hopefully they'll go back inside. I'd like a nice uninterrupted video wishes. I know Rob, you asked for so much. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see, it is quite brisk out here. I have my 1940s Sears Roebuck Mackinac and my vintage uh, wool turtleneck. Uh, it's, it's probably 1950s or 60s, but um, they did have them in the 30s and 40s as well. And for, further back, turtleneck sweaters are not a new concept. It's really hard to find them these days. It really is. They're they're not in fashion. <laughs> uh, and the ones I've seen are they're very light. They're not like this. This is a good vintage one. Anyways, we're not talking about clothes today. No, we're going to do a bit of a wrap-up video. Well, not a wrap-up video, but a follow-up video for the previous footage that you've been following since the start of the video. So this is kind of more or less a, um, a finished product to a degree. Now, we will have a light-up video, of course, following this one. But I thought I need to make a video for this week. I've been very tardy at making content. Now, just see what I mean? See what I mean? <sighs> Audience almost. And they're cranky. Anyways, 
It's 52 degrees. It's not terribly too cold, but it's definitely very wet and chilly. When I was that age, I was not outside playing. No, I wanted to, but I didn't. I actually had a garage with my model train, so I would sit out in the garage and play with my model trains. And I would get tired because it was cold in there. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow. Um, we have an update on the Pauls. Now, you've been seeing the footage that I've put in, assembled, and put in before this session in the time cave. Uh, this is the tail end, so, you know, we're wrapping things up a bit. So, having coffee. It's been a bit of a process. I've spent many days this week working on this project. Yeah, got the wind field and the root beer globe going on. I know this this video makes it look like it's kind of ruby, but it's it's root beer. It's you can tell it's not red. I love this thing. It's my fate. One of my favorite cold glasses. Mm -hmm. It might be dethroned soon. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, it'll always be a favorite, but. There's something that's in the works that will be pretty phenomenal. But anyhow, just pay no attention to what I'm saying. Leave it as a surprise. Anyhow, <laughs> the um, the burger. No, excuse me. Paul's burger. I'm sorry. I've I've been in burger mode because uh, I was ch chatting with friend and subscriber Matt Cumberledge earlier about burger lanterns and yeah. So I've been on the burger channel. Um, <laughs> Got to, got to switch back over to the wheeling and stamping company stuff here. Um, so I have an update, and uh, apparently some of the uh, stuff I used on this lantern has been weeping, and I didn't wipe it down properly. Anyway, anyway, this will be a cool piece. I think I'm going to be happy with it the way it is now. Uh, as you could see in the previous videos leading up to it, it was being very stubborn. Yeah, very stubborn. I'm going to finish this coffee before it gets too cold, because if I leave, leave it unattended out here for a second, especially being as little as there is in here, it's going to be bitter cold. Oh. That was practically room temperature, which is 52 degrees. Not that cold, but getting there. <sighs> Enough. Here's the Pauls, number two, Cold Blast. Yeah, I put a, a, a ruby uh, flash globe in there. I thought it looked pretty handsome that way. Where's the burner? No burner yet, no burner, but hey, at least it's out. We got the burner out. So, and I adjusted the, the, the lift. Oh, what was that all about? Easy does it. So I got this kind of working better. And um, I was able to get the glow plate uh, bracket, the clip that holds the, the wire to the plate. What's that all about? Why is that doing that? Why is, there, why is there a click? It wasn't doing that before. Now it is. Sounds like the spring's unhappy. Anyways, it has a click now. <laughs> I tell you, it's always something. Anyway, so as you can see, I got the burner out. Everything looks better. Uh, cleaned up a bit. I uh, got all the paint off. So the uh, let me just move this back here a little bit. So the um, oven cleaner trash bag trick is definitely very effective. It is. It, it definitely works. So because the oven cleaner will evaporate over time. And if you put it in a trash bag with the oven cleaner, then the evaporation is much less and it slows it way down and it can actually stay on the surface you want to remove the paint from longer and be more effective. So all you have to do is just hose it off. So in the future, that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I'm just going to spray it and bag it and leave it in there for maybe a day and then come out and hose it off and watch it all just blow away. So yeah, but that's a method a lot of people have done. Some of my friends have done with great results. I get impatient sometimes and I don't want to do that, but I end up spending more time on it than if I had just done that in the first place. So, lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, you can teach an old dog new tricks, but 
This thing is really quite cool. It's a neat old cold blast lantern. And I think one of the things that draws me to it is because it does have the profile of a first generation blizzard. I mean, look at that. Four slotted baffle vents, right? Look at the crown. It's almost identical to the first generation early blizzards offered by Dietz. The fount is the same style. The air tubes are the same style. I mean, there's so much is similar to the first generation blizzard. I mean, really. Do you mind? I'm making a video. Thank you. Shut up. Anyways. This is really cool. It is. Um, so, yeah, we're pretty much we're pretty much where we want to be. We're pretty much where we want to be. This turned out to be okay. It, it seems to be having a nice finish under it. Uh, it's a little splotchy, though. And it has some weird you know, splotchiness going on here. It's not very even. Now, some people don't like that. Some people would be kind of upset about that, and they would feel that they need to make it an even color and, and paint it, which is their desire. That's fine. I, I'm not going to hate on anybody for doing that, but, you know, even though it's not my ideal, even though it's not my ideal, I'd say that it's still pretty cool. And I think once I get the parts that it's missing like the a correct burner and a correct cone uh it will be it'll be fine it will be, look good it will look good and uh we'll we'll get it done but i will i will put a little bit of a mother's finish on this it's not pitted it's pretty smooth metal um there are a few little pits but nothing chronic or too noticeable so i'm going to do uh some mother's polish on this and get that nice subtle aged sheen to the metal that I've done before and it will look great but yeah the paint is off of it now and she she's got a good character she looks good I think um so fuel cap is cleaned up it's nice and uh it's a fine thread cap and it's uh nice and snug and I just need a I need a burner and cone now here's what it came with if we, I tried to illustrate in the videos prior but I fi as I finally got this burner out you can see this little lever. See that? So this would have, you would have just lifted it and brushed the top of the wick to make it go out completely. Uh, that's the design. That's the whole intent of this burner. But, you know, it is what it is. But it's kind of, it's cool. It's different, you know. I never knew about these burners until I bought this lantern. So I'm just like, ah. Thankfully, Lantern Joe showed me what this is and told me what it is. Let me hide behind it so you can actually see it in focus. If my face is in the in the frame, then it's not going to be focusing on this. Anyways. Shut up. <laughs> I know I'm terrible. Anyways, this is really cool. Crazy old burner. Phoenix burner, I believe it's called. Um, and then this is the cone. See, I this burner probably would work. I probably could get this burner working just fine. But... With this cone that it came with? No. No, this is uh, nickel-plated brass, and it's very thin brass, so it's been splitting, and it's very brittle. And it has a big old chunk out of it. It's a couple chunks out of it, in fact. So it's not its not really something that will burn. Are they leaving? Yes. Yes. We might have a quiet video now. I'm sorry. I... I Rob, why do you not like children? I like children. Just not when I'm making a video, that's all. <laughs> well, if you had children, I know, I know. Anyways, this is a cool old burner, but it's tired. It's not going to ever look at how look at look at the look at the chips out of this thing. And look at the splits and the chips, you know. And I could get this if that thing was in better shape, I would be burning it right now. But with with this like no, if, if that that lamp this lamp would not burn properly with a cone like that. Heavens no. So I'm at the liberty of the parts I ordered. However, in the fount when I did finally get the burner out uh, this last week, this was in the in the fount. Nice old generous number two size wick, one inch wick. So. This is probably original. There you go. You can see some char on there. It's been trimmed a little bit. But um, at any rate, this thing has been used definitely because it doesn't have the proper original burner on it. So I have that coming. I have that coming. 
and it should be hopefully here today fingers crossed um but anyway we'll see but we'll have another video wrapping up the entire process with this in its proper finished state with a burner and i will be able to light it up and demonstrate um now this lantern will be incomplete for a while because i don't think i have any leads on a replacement lift lock so as you see the the lift here is missing the plate with the slot this would have been a very unique style i'll 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 throw in a photo of what it's supposed to look like. I have it on my other Paul's number two uh, cold blast. The one that just uh, was after this model. So this one's 1900. The 194, 195 example that I have has the lift lock and it's the same. It would have been unchanged. But this is missing. It's broken off. So this thing has been used. And there's some dents in the skirt. Uh, but other than that, very straight. Very straight. So easy. Quit rocking the boat. <laughs> Anyhow, this thing is uh, kind of a basket case still. It's not going to be 100% original or complete, except for a proper burner and cone. Uh, and, you know, those are on their way, but it will not have a lift lock plate. I, I did ask Lantern Joe if he had one, but he didn't really answer my question, and so I'd take that as a he doesn't, or he hasn't looked through his pile of parts yet. But I will definitely bug him again and see what he has. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll come across one that's the proper style for this. Um, which will fit right where that solder is. Because you can see it was curved. It, had, it, it came out. So it comes down and curves out as you saw in the picture that I shared. Um, that's what I'm looking for. So if anybody has some roached out parts, parts lanterns, uh, early cold blast outside lift Paul's number two that are beyond salvage and you have that part and you want to let it go just hit me up in the comment section and we'll work out a deal uh, I like it <laughs> I could use it to make this thing a really nice complete lantern because these are rare these are rare and you probably have never seen one most of you guys out there have not seen one and most of you don't even aren't even aware of this example of Paul's cold blast this is the very first cold blast design that uh, Wheeling Stamping came out with, which made the Paul's Lantern. And uh, yeah, Paul's Eater. Paul's Eater was definitely a product uh, as of the Wheeling Stamping Company, which was originally the Nail City Company. So Nail City became uh, Wheeling in the turn of the century. So there you go. And that's why so many of the Paul's Lanterns have that swing out globe style uh, lift, like on the hot on the hot blast. They kept that on the hot blast. The cold blast did not utilize that design because it just wouldn't work with the style of chimney that they have. So anyway, there we are. We're almost done with this project. It's almost there. We're just waiting on the parts. Uh, I haven't leak tested this, but from all I can see, it has no reason to leak. I don't think it will be leaking. It, it seems to be very, very solid. So it should be good to go. Solder looks all right. Uh, the bottom looks good and solid. And it's been painted, so it's preserved. So there we go. Anyway, yeah, I haven't stripped the bottom yet. It's still wearing black paint. So, yeah. I don't think I'm going to strip the bottom, actually. No, I don't think so. Um, there's a, is there a wet spot. Hmm. Weird. Maybe that's just WD-40 from yesterday. It probably is. I don't think it's a leak. I have had nothing in this for it to leak through. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyways, we'll definitely have to do a leak test at some point in time. And we will find out what lies underneath the, the fount. Anyways, it's still a cool piece. It's still neat. I like it. I think it's going to be a really nice lantern once it's complete. But that's the, the latest status on it. And it does have a patent date of 1898, right here on the on the outside of the airlift. I mean airlift. What are you talking about, Rob? Can you see that? Can you see any of that? Anyways, I'll try and take a picture close up and thread it in with the rest of the stuff. But yeah, this is, um, you know, it's kind of a cool piece. Kind of cool. I mean, it is cool. Let me put this this beat up cone in there. Let's put the beat up cone in there, shall we? All right. 
just so it has something to sit on. So this poor glow plate has something to sit on. I think I need to do some adjustments to this thing because it doesn't want to... I think it's... I think something happened here. Yeah, maybe. To see how it wants to sit kind of crooked? It wants to sit more forward. Maybe uh, me playing with this lift wire bracket thing yesterday. Maybe think since I thought I, I fixed it, maybe it made it sit closer to that. Maybe. Well, we'll just have to keep playing with it then. We have some time. We do have time. It doesn't sit completely down on top of the globe. Uh, the globe plate does not sit firmly on the top of the burner cone. And it did before I started playing with this. So we, we're not out of the woods yet, friends. We have further to go with this project, but at least it's stripped and it looks decent and it looks presentable. The saga continues. All right, well, thanks again for being patient in this late submission for this week. I hope you guys are having a nice weekend, and we will get back to it next week on Thursday because my schedule will be readjusted back to its normal schedule since the holiday last week, Cesar Chavez Day, uh, City Los Angeles City uh, recognized holiday, threw my work schedule off for this week. And now we're back to normal, and... Uh, There'll be no more further interruptions. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now.